All right, cooking with beard. Doesn't really have a, a ring to it though, does it? We need more alliteration in there. Broiling with beard? No. Yeah, that sounds terrible. <laughs> All right, so today we are making a rather large Philly cheesesteak. And uh, Mrs. Bid is here, she's off the camera, but she's um, she's not cooking today. She's making me cook. I think she's a little bit mad because I took all the credit for the last cooking video. I said, I got a lot of stick in the comments because I said, this is the best thing I've ever made, despite the fact that Mrs. Bid cooked it all. But it was under my direction and between you and me, she's kind of a terrible cook. Let's see how you fare today. <laughs> I to cook all that yourself. Let's see. Let's get to it. That was worth it. I didn't think it would be worth it, but it was worth it. That looks good. Impressive. Very nice. All right. Man, that was a lot of hard work. I know why Mrs. Beard was so cranky last week now. Anyway, here we have it. I think it was worth it in the end. It turned out humongous. I don't want to say it's the biggest Philly cheesesteak ever made, because I'm sure somebody's made a bigger one somewhere, but it's pretty big. And I'm sure maybe I didn't make it to exact Philadelphia spec so tell me in the comments if I got anything wrong, but um, it's pretty cool and uh, I'm gonna dedicate this one to my good mate, Notorious Bob Shout. Um, he's a native of Philadelphia, so I hope I didn't be proud with this one. But uh, yeah, without further ado, this is Baby It's Food. This is the Monster Philly Cheesesteak Challenge. Who's good? All right, start a timer just for, uh, just for fun. And if I can figure it out, I'll put up a calorie count on the screen. Dread to think. Ugh. What's up, Ben? Welcome back. That was a bit of a weak one. You have to let me off. I've got a, a sore jaw after this. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode. And um, in this week's episode of the Chronicles of Beard, sadly, no restaurant challenge. I mean, I'm sure you can understand, but um, it's all right because uh, I decided to make a giant Philly cheesesteak instead. I think I'm going to open face this thing and eat some of the steak first. Hey, solid tactic. But if you're thinking, hold on a second, why would you make a sandwich so big you can't actually eat it like you're supposed to eat a sandwich? And if you're thinking that, hang your head in shame. What, are you new here or something? <laughs> when you get a really cheesy piece, it's incredible. I should have put slightly more cheese in. I almost nailed it. Not quite. Yeah, I got pretty close though. This is a solid 7 out of 10 meal. The peppers really do give it something though. I'm glad I put those in. I was tempted to leave out the veggies all together. I've eaten enough salad this week. <laughs> yeah, I'm always on that salad train. <laughs> I thought about leaving the vegetables out mainly because I I wasn't really sure it was in line with the traditional Philly cheesesteak recipe, although I've heard there are common additions of green peppers, onions, sometimes mushrooms, God forbid. <laughs> but it didn't matter because I couldn't find a, a soft hoagie roll, so why not throw them in? Oh, yum. That was a really cheesy piece. Cheesy piece. <laughs> I, I'm just laughing at myself for the way that I said cheesy piece. I was like, cheesy piece. <laughs> I don't know why. I think I, I'm, I'm getting a bit tactically confused at this point. I'm thinking, do I take the top bun off? Do I put it back on? I'm trying to think of how best to, to eat this thing. <laughs> I don't know if this is a great idea, but. <laughs> Yeah, spoiler alert, it, it turned out not to be a, a fantastic idea, as you can see <laughs> by my face, so I, I quickly revert to the, the previous tactic. I think what I'm gonna do is make like four smaller subs out of the large mothership sandwich. Ugh. 
Uh, yeah, this is where the drama begins, so strap yourselves in. Don't go anywhere, folks. Maybe you could pause the video and make yourself a coffee or something. I don't know, but um, yeah, this is this is the tough part because the bread, not so much the bread, but the chewing of the bread is what makes it really difficult here. It's pretty taxing on the jaw. And even though the food is still delicious, it is starting to cool, so it's becoming more laborious to eat. Oh. Oh. I'll tell you this, this really is delicious. And I'm not just saying that because I made it. In fact, I'm, I'm quite surprised that something I made came out quite as well. I mean, I'm not a bad cook, but I'm not by any means a, a chef. So, the fact this tastes good um, instills a real sense of pride in me. <laughs> The only downside, really, is it takes like four hours to prepare and, and film this whole thing. <laughs> I need my very own um, food challenge chef to, uh, to help me make this stuff. Barry Lewis, if you're watching, I probably got a vacancy on my staff. <laughs> I'm joking, I don't have the stuff. <laughs> the bread is making it hard now though. Yeah, calm down mate, it's not that good. <laughs> Let's get on, that was terrible. Let's get on to how this was made because when we did the Cinnabon video, a lot of people asked for the recipe for some <laughs> crazy reason. So this is, uh, it's pretty easy to make. Uh, 1500 grams of uh, beef steak uh, scripts, some green peppers, some onions, of course you need some seasoning in there and uh, some cheese I use cheese slices I'm not sure if that's particularly traditional butter to uh, to toast the bread and speaking of the bread that's pretty much the, the hardest thing to get hold of I had to get two one kilo salt and pepper loaves cut a bit off the end and just wedge them together <sighs> it's not even the amount of food at this point it's just it's so tough the steak and the bread together. A crusty roll was a bad choice. A giant crusty roll was an even worse choice. It's just really hard on the jaw. I think I'm gonna have to separate the steak from the bread. Going into the final straight here. Ugh. Yeah, so um, so right about now, I've um, slowed down considerably and just kind of abandoned that mini sub technique in favor of just eating the, the remaining steak, peppers, onions. Which still tasted good, but like I said, it was cold. So uh, I wanted to get that down. Then I could just focus on chewing the, the bread. Uh, uh, I sound like some wounded extra from Platoon or some other harrowing war movie. <laughs> I'm starting to try and break up the bread now, I think, with, with my hands. Or hand chew, as we call it in the industry. <sighs> oh. 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 I'm getting locked, Joe. Yeah, I mean, if you're ever going to make a giant sandwich, Probably not, because I imagine you're in control of all your faculties. But if you are going to do it, then um, don't use crusty bread. This required a, a mandible of steel to, to even get this far. The good thing about bread is it breaks down when you drink liquid. Steak doesn't. <laughs> yeah, steak's just one of those things. Either you're good at eating it, or you're not. I mean, both ingredients independently were fantastic. The steak with the peppers and the onions had that nice kind of salty peppery vibe. It's making me hungry just thinking about it, but um, had a nice sweet edge from the peppers, which is why I include them really, and I, I, I'm glad I did because it added to the flavor, but coupled with the bread, it's kind of tough to, uh, to eat in large volumes, right? So that's why I had to, to separate them. Not that it made it any less enjoyable, well, up until this point anyway. It's not particularly fun right now. <laughs> oh. Wow, this is a serious slog. 
Those sounds again. You know, I'm watching this back now thinking, I hope nobody in the comments tries to disqualify me for getting an extra glass of water there. Normally I'd have my big jug, but I forgot to prepare it, so I had to pay a visit to the tap there, which in this condition was quite difficult. I've got this. Under an hour, I've got it. <laughs> Ooh. You gotta respect the confidence. That's not like me. Normally at this point I'd be really defeatist. I'd be like, oh I can't do it. But I'm trying to trying to grind through it. I actually felt I don't want to say I felt alright because I didn't. But I, I felt pretty confident at this point. I think largely because this last piece of bread was softer than the rest. Thank God. This piece is a little bit softer. Oh really get more professional with this audio commentary i tend to repeat myself a lot but um anyway i would love to hear whether you're enjoying these huge home cooked food challenges that's one of the reasons actually we moved house so i could do stuff like this more often so it's been fun to do <laughs> especially with mrs beard at home gives us something fun to do during lockdown <laughs> i'm almost there just paying a visit to the fridge for a fizzy drink. I would lean forward and show you this. Oh my god. It's old Jamaica. Ginger beer. Don't ask me why. The bubbles will help. I mean, ideally, I wouldn't have gone with ginger ale, but uh, there wasn't much else in there. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments if you did or if you didn't, and hopefully I'll see you at the next one. <sighs> Alright, this is Bibbit's food. My breathing is a bit shallow right now. And that was the monster Philly cheesesteak challenge. Um. Oh. <laughs> oh. That was an old school video. Almost an hour. That was difficult. Don't get me wrong, it was delicious. Really delicious. But that bread was hard work. <clears throat> I'm gonna go put some ice on my jaw. And um, I'll catch you for the next one. I don't care what she says, that was definitely better than the cinnamon roll. Mm.